In 2020, I quit a cushy corporate job as a patent attorney and bought an abandoned building. What? I had big plans of converting this commercial building into my dream home and workshop. Okay! The renovation took way longer than I ever expected, but four years later, I'm finally ready to reveal it to all you. Yeah! So let's head inside. A quick refresher on the stats of the building. When I bought it, the building had been abandoned for about six years and it had quite a few previous lives. In the 80s, it was a Porsche auto body shop. The last legal business in the front was a flower shop and apparently that flower shop was converted into a legal nightclub for a few years until the cops shut it down. This all brick building is approximately 6,000 square feet split evenly into two floors. The downstairs is my workshop where I get to play and build all kinds of cool things to share with you guys. And I've converted the entire upstairs, almost 3,000 square feet, into my dream home. And that's where we're gonna be focusing the tour. So with that background, let's get started on the tour. So when I walked in this place four years ago, it was quite different. There was piles of trash all over the floor. This was all one big open space. In order to separate the upstairs living space from the workshop over there, we had to add in this hallway here. We also had to replace the door entryway here. The old entryway was just rusted. The glass was cracked. It was a total disaster. And on top of that, there was some really interesting ornate metalwork on the front of the door. I don't want this video to get flagged, so I'm not gonna say what it looked like, but well, you know, take a look for yourself. So we got this whole new facade. We built out this brand new feature wall with this industrial HQ LED sign. We got the floating rock shelf. We'll get to the shop over there in a minute, but coming through this door, we got the hallway leading up to the living area. We put a new vinyl plank flooring here. And well, you can see the stairs with the motion sensor. That is probably my favorite part of this entryway. It just makes me smile every time I see the lights go. Doo -doo 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 -doo. So onward, upstairs, let's go. Now, before we reveal the new open concept living, dining, kitchen area, let's flash back and look at the state we found this in. This room was actually already a wide open concept and it was probably the nicest part of the building, but that isn't saying much. There was this makeshift kitchen area in the corner, which was a total hack DIY job. The neighbors have told me stories and it sounds like that kitchen area was actually being used as a bar for an illegal nightclub that the Serbian mafia was running out of this joint. There was some hardwood flooring in here, but because the roof had so many leaks, it had had years of rainwater coming through. The floorboards were rotted out. There was mushrooms or fungus growing out of the floor. They hadn't left proper gaps against the sidewalls, so the floor was buckling and popping all over the place. And then in the staircase leading up to the roof, there were actually pigeons nesting in the ceiling. So four years later, and I couldn't be more happy how this open concept living space turned out. Over here, we got the kitchen that I entirely built from scratch myself. I made the concrete countertops, built all the cabinets. I also made this really cool modern pendant light above the island. A few people have commented that it looks like a Westworld inspired light. I don't think I was directly taking inspiration, but hey, I like that futuristic look of Westworld, so maybe that crept into my brain somehow. The kitchen has a bunch of really cool features. For starters, I'm standing in front of an induction cooktop, which I absolutely love. For those that don't know, induction is not an electric cooktop. It is all the best parts of a gas cooktop and an electric cooktop, but that's not what this video is about. The induction cooktop is in a 10 foot island here, eight foot concrete run, and then a two foot by four foot butcher block countertop, which I build myself out of hard maple. Over here, one of my favorite features is this cool flip up door with a pull out coffee bar. Of course, we got the double oven, the microwave, which also doubles as a convection oven, is below the butcher block here. Then we're moving over to the pantries on either side of the fridge. And these are one of my favorite things in the kitchen. You get the pull out storage, which I absolutely love because it turns your depth into width. You don't have any wasted space because you can see everything and it's really compact in width. And we've got one of those on both sides of the fridge. I highly recommend these to anyone, whether you have a large or small kitchen, because they just make so much more efficient use of space than a typical pantry where things get in the back of the shelves and just go there for years. You only end up using the fronts of the shelves. 
So these, you can use every square inch. Now I feel like on MTV Cribs, they always used to want to see what's in the fridge. Chris, I let go my ego. But I'm kind of scared to see. Yeah, mine looks like a lived-in fridge. Lots of stuff. We'll just say lots of stuff's in the fridge. There, checkbox. We know it's in my fridge. <laughs> Moving on from the kitchen to the open concept living dining area. But we had the floor that was rotted out in spots. So what I decided to do was cut out the rotted sections and patch them up with plywood, but actually use the parts of the old wood floor as the subfloor for a new wood floor. How many times can I say floor in a single sentence? But there was one constraint because of that. The old floorboards ran vertically the length of the room. That meant either laying them horizontally, which we didn't want to do because you always want flooring to go the direction of the long side of the room. So I went with five inch maple flooring, ran it diagonally. And after living with it for a couple years now, I love this diagonal flooring. It took a little bit more work to install, but totally worth it. So other than the flooring, I didn't do a whole lot structurally in this living space. We just cleaned up the brick, but mostly left the brick as is to get that really cool loft feeling. And the ceiling, we had timber framing and these 16 inch steel I-beams running across, which just gives a really cool industrial look to the space. I just finished kind of styling this living area with new rugs. I've got this cool little indoor solo fireplace, which doesn't have to be plumbed. It just uses gel fuel, really digging that. As for the couch, it's a sign of one of the things that happened during the renovation, and that was getting a dog, Tex, as all you may know. White couches and dogs are a terrible idea, so I'm currently searching for a new couch, but till then, we just got blankets over the couch to make do. Behind the living area, we have the dining area over here. We've got this beautiful single live edge slab maple table with the concrete pendant light that I built a few months ago and just added some cool leather chairs to go with it. I'm really digging how this space is styled now. Over there, we have Texas Nook. I don't know where he is now, but he loves to sit up on the couch and just watch the people in the cars go by on the street. If you see any furniture that you like as we're walking around, like the Arctic erosion table or the half and half concrete wall date table in front of the couch, chances are I've built it and there's a video for it on my channel. And of course, we've got the Nat Geo collection, which goes all the way back to 1923. This was my great grandfather's and my grandfather's, so it's something I really treasure. And I built this bookshelf to just kind of show them off and make them a focal point in the living area. Moving over this way, we've got the staircase leading up to the roof, and this is actually something that I don't think any of you guys have seen. One of the very last things we did in the last couple weeks was redoing the stairs here. They just thrown down some plywood boards here. They looked awful. I built out new landings here from leftover maple flooring, added new treads running up to the roof, and it looks way better. If you're wondering where's the video showing these stairs being made over, it hasn't come out yet, but don't worry. It's gonna be included as bonus footage in the video we're currently editing, which chronicles the entire renovation process, all four years of it, start to finish in one video. And these stairs lead up to the roof deck and yard, which we built out last summer. We'll come back and check that out later. But first, I wanna walk you guys all the way to the back of the building and show you the studio, because there are some huge updates there that a lot of you haven't seen yet. There's Mr. Tex right here. Hey, buddy. Wanna say hi to everyone? It's really his house more than anyone's. So moving up this way into the hallway, actually one thing that's kind of cool, kind of wanted to share. I've actually spent a lot of time the last couple of weeks actually making, I don't know if I'd call it art, but wall decor, maybe art, I don't know. This one I made on the CNC, carved this pattern out of foam, covered it in epoxy, painted it, framed it. I think it came out pretty cool, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. There's some others I'll show you later on the tour as well. So for now, we're gonna go all the way back to the studio space. So before we reveal everything we've done in here over the last month or so, I wanna flash back and look at what this space was originally. The holes in the roof were probably the worst in the whole building over here. There were spots in this back area that you could literally put your foot right through the floor because it was so rotted due to rain coming through the roof. When I acquired the building, there was just piles of trash strewn everywhere, all kinds of fun stuff, ranging from a old Porsche headlight to 10 year old bouillon sauce, and even some stuff that ended up being useful. This looks kind of like a workbench. It's not the most stable thing ever, but it's not falling apart. We're actually using that table in the room next door and I'll show you guys that later on the tour. But now, check out what we've done in the studio here. So this is a space where cameraman Cam and I spend a lot of time editing, planning projects, basically doing everything for Industrial Maker. 
because we spend a lot of time here, we've got a little lounge section over here by the window with the parametric bean table that I made in my last video. So then over here, Cam and I installed built-ins and believe it or not, this is just an Ikea hack, but I think it came out really cool. And I do have a hot tip here for people who wanna do something like this, a built-in look super easy in their home. So I've seen a lot of Ikea hacks where people take the bookshelves and they paint them, they do a lot of trim and so on. So we were trying to get this done quick. So the hack I came up with was literally just to paint the wall the exact same color as I was painting the Ikea bookshelves and cabinets. With the wall and furniture all painted the same color, it looks as if it's all sort of one structure and gives you that built-in look without having to do all the trim and edging and stuff like that that you normally do to get yourself a built-in look. We installed a television here. Cam and I can use this to preview all the videos as we're editing. Now that's super nice. On display, if you guys didn't know I was a cover boy, did you? You might think this is from Six Flags or something where you make a magazine cover, but no, this is real. I was actually on the cover. Up here, we got a picture of College Mike. Don't wanna admit how long ago that was with Dave Matthews. God, ugh, the things I wore in college. Over here, we of course have the uh, obligatory silver play button for when I pass 100,000 subscribers. We're still working on that gold one for a million subs. If you haven't subbed, there's 50 episodes chronicling this whole renovation. It would mean a lot to me if you hit that sub and bell so you could check out all those episodes and let's push this channel to a million subs in 2024. One other noble thing here, the shadow box, my mom actually put this together for me. Thank you, mom. It actually has some old woodworking tools from my grandfather. We got a level, a plane, a couple hand drills. Pretty cool. Oh, and over here, you guys might be wondering about Mr. Gerard the giraffe. This was actually a dumpster diving find in the alley and he's kind of a little mascot. We've also made this space so it doubles as a photography video studio. We got green screen and backdrops up there so we can do fun green screen shots and snazzy photographs of things we make like we did in the last video. That's gonna be super fun and open up some cool possibilities for future videos. Moving over here, we got the trio of guitars that I made, including the people's favorite, <clears throat> the Lego epoxy guitar made entirely of Legos and epoxy. Even includes the Lego tuners. And of course we have the parametric stair rail that we built in. That is honestly one of my favorite features. I just love the parametric wave. You got it here. You got that similar thing going on in this table. One of my favorite design elements. So as we're walking into the third bedroom here, you'll notice actually another sort of wall decor splatter paint thing that I just threw together using some scrap plywood just to get something interesting on the walls. And then you got this third bedroom here, which is not even being used as a bedroom. It's a 3D printer slash electronics slash camera room. And yeah, that basically sums it up. This is a, a functional room for industrial maker more than it is something that's styled. So let's get out of here, head down the hall to the second bedroom. Moving into the second bedroom, we're not gonna spend a lot of time here because really the star of the show is the master that we're gonna get to soon. But as anyone who runs a business out of their home knows, lots of your home spaces get converted into spaces for your business. Right now, this is storing the swamp wood table that I made a couple videos ago. One of my favorite things I've ever built. And that's gonna be going up for sale in the web shop that I'll be opening shortly. Another thing for you guys to stay tuned for. There's a Murphy bed over against this wall that I can pull out when I have guests. I've also got my workout equipment here. Cam likes to joke that this treadmill is the most expensive dust collector I own. And he's not entirely wrong about that. Speaking of cameraman Cam, check this out. I gave him these Live Edge Burl slabs for Christmas and he made this little table from resin, which is pretty cool. First ever epoxy woodworking project. Uh, we're just storing it here for now. If your name is Cam and you're on YouTube, well, I guess you gotta make some river tables. I think that's just, just the rule. Honestly, second and third bedrooms are probably the least cool places in the building, but wanted to give you guys a feel for everything. I wanna be complete. So moving across the hall though, we have the guest bath, which I love this space. So this bathroom was the first one I built out when I moved into the building. We had a two-phase renovation plan. I finished a couple of the bedrooms, the, the studio in the back, and this bathroom so that I could move in and live in this space while I finished renovating the front of the building. In retrospect, I would never wish this on my worst enemy. Living in a building that's heavily under construction, no fun at all. But we got through it and I am happy with the result. We got the concrete floating sink that I fabricated myself. Now, after I revealed the full bathroom here, I did get some comments that it was a little bit cold. Somebody even called it a prison cell bathroom. Personally, I like a clean, white, modern look in certain spaces, 
but I did see the point that maybe we could use a pop of color. So I decided to make a little bit of street art wall decor to add that color in. We've got a little bit of bonus footage of you, so let's cue the montage making some cool painted resin covered wall art. I guess I'm pretty happy how this came out. It definitely does the job of adding some color to this bathroom. Now, before we get down to the master bedroom and the roof, which are probably my two favorite spots, I wanna head down to the workshop to look at the work that's been done down there and talk to you guys about something that I am very excited to share a little bit about. All right, so I'm walking through a door, for starters, that wasn't here before. We added this whole wall in, which, to be honest, I didn't wanna do, but we had to have a fire rated separation between the garage space and the stairs leading up to the upstairs. There had to be two entrances to the residential space in order for it to be considered a separate space by code from the commercial space that's down here. So this is the garage area and we haven't done a whole lot of renovation work in this space, but there's a good reason why. We're treating the commercial space as separate from the residential space. So we pulled permits to do all the work upstairs and I just made the workshop and garage functional for the time being. And that's where the thing I'm excited to share comes in. And I wasn't sure whether to share at this point or not, but I think I'm just gonna go ahead. This is exciting because it relates to the next phase for me for this channel. So last November, I put in an application for Chicago's Small Business Improvement Fund grant. This grant would basically give me money to build out this commercial space. And I got news a couple months ago that I was selected to be part of the program. So that means I should be getting a grant from the city in order to build out the space down here. Now, the reason I say it might be a little bit early to share this news is because it's the city. And I never believe anything is 100% until the money's in the bank. Obviously, there's lots of loopholes to jump through with the city. But at this point, I have the general approval to get a grant from the city to renovate this entire space downstairs. The program could give me up to $150,000 for the renovation. So obviously I don't wanna put a bunch of money into that if I can get a grant from the city to renovate the building. This building is in an area that's I guess considered a, a developing area of Chicago. So that's why the program is trying to incentivize people to build business in this community, improve the area around the building. Also something that I'm super excited about. There will be more details on that in a future video when I reveal the specific plans for the space down here. It's something big. It's a workshop, but something more. Stay tuned for that because that announcement should be coming in the next month or so. As for the work that has been done, well, there's some cool stuff. You guys know I love street art. And obviously behind me, we got this huge mural that was painted by my fellow YouTubers, 1000 Kipto. They came here, collaborated to do that mural. It was super fun. I'm getting like real teary eyed right now. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> That's, so happy. That's cool, man. And I absolutely love this thing every time I walk by it. We also have over by the big CNC machine, another mural by Sasha Tiger. He's a guy I just met through these videos. Awesome guy came, we hung out, had a great time while he painted this mural. Oh man, hug it out, hug it out. <laughs> this is unbelievable, man. And I absolutely love this thing as backdrop for the CNC. In general, I just love street art. So having this downstairs every day, I walk through here and it, it just makes me happy. And one other thing down here, also a dumpster diving find was this super cool apothecary library cabinet. Found this in the alley and just had to bring it inside. It's solid oak. And I see these things selling for quite a bit of money online. So obviously this needs to be refinished, but I'm pretty excited to get it worked into the decor somewhere. So while you guys are watching the tour, if you have any ideas about how to work a restyled, refinished version of this apothecary cabinet into my decor, leave a comment, let me know. So moving out of the garage space, over into the workshop, 
it's actually starting to look a little bit more like a woodworking shop now. We got a new HVAC added to the wall to separate the workshop from the hallway leading upstairs. We still got the, uh, the old part of the front door here. I don't know what I'm gonna do with this, but there's gotta be something fun that I can do with this. I don't know, if you have any ideas of what to do with this, let me know. <laughs> While we're in the workshop, I wanna take a second to talk to you guys about something else that's very important. One of the questions I get a lot is, would you do it again? And the answer is yes, absolutely. There have definitely been a lot of challenges to doing YouTube full time, renovating this building, keeping content flowing, while also dealing with the city definitely has been challenging, but also really rewarding to do something I'm passionate about, to build a community of people who are following along with the project. I'll meet people randomly out in public who watch the videos and tell me about their renovation projects. And it's just super exciting to have that little effect on people's lives. And hopefully through these videos, give everyone a little bit of entertainment once or twice a month when I put the videos out. And I also have to thank all of the sponsors that have supported me because at the end of the day, I would not be able to do this channel without the support of sponsors. And throughout this whole renovation process, one of my largest supporters has been Ariat Work. Lord knows through all the dirt and filth, I have put Ariat Work's clothing to the test so I can tell you that Ariat Work's clothing is second to none. For those of you that want to support the channel, one of the things you can do is support the sponsors that make the videos possible. And while Ariat Work Gear is amazing for those who are doing the work, they also make really cool stylish clothing for anyone, regardless of whether you're on the job site or not. One thing everyone loves is a good, comfy sweatshirt. I'm showing you here a couple examples of my personal favorite Ariat sweatshirts if you want to support the channel and get a comfy sweatshirt for yourself. Cam and I have also been rocking these Ariat Work vests. In the springtime, as we're transitioning weather and the weather's kind of all over the place, these vests have been awesome. And I can wear these on the job site or out on the town hanging out with friends. And if you got a dog, Ariat Work even makes some super stylish dog jackets so they can tag along with you when you're enjoying the outdoors and a bit chilly weather. And again, there'll be links in the description below to all my Ariat favorites. When you buy something from Ariat Work, you're not only getting great clothes, but it's also a way that you can support the work that I'm doing here on this channel. So I thank you in advance for checking out those links. Thanks Ariat Area Work for being a huge supporter of the channel consistently over the last four years. And now let's head back upstairs to check out the master bedroom. <laughs> So oh, as we're heading here, there's two other things to note. So first up, we have the uh, the half bath. We renovated this thing in basically 24 hours. And I think under $1,000, we did the whole thing. I think it came out pretty cool, but definitely if there is an area to upgrade, I might see myself doing a really cool vanity and sink. So moving out of the half bath right next to it, we have this little nook, which I basically have converted into a storage nook. Just threw some, some drapes up to make it look stylish, and then I've got extra storage. Behind me is the top of that elevator. For those of you that remember, there's actually a little lift or elevator that was in the building. It actually still works. We just couldn't have an elevator here for code because the commercial and residential areas up and downstairs needed to be separate, but we left the elevator in. So I don't know, maybe in the future, maybe I'll figure out something. But for now, just a cool little storage nook, closed off. So it looks nice, you can always use more storage. So now for the master bedroom. When I moved in here, there actually was sort of like a bedroom space here. I don't know what it had been used for, but the roof was caving in, leaking. There was like hideous mold growing in the floors. There was mold on all the walls. It was awful. We tore down and replaced all the walls. We built dual walk-in closets, but the space was kind of cold. It was just white. It was missing a lot of styling over the last two weeks. We spent a lot of time trying to turn the master bedroom into something really special. So we've got a quick montage to all new footage you guys haven't seen before going from the plain white walled, somewhat boring bedroom to what we have now. So the first order of business was painting an accent wall behind the bed. And I decided to go with a very dark blue color. I don't know what the fancy paint brand name for it was, but we'll just say dark blue. By adding that dark color on one wall, I'm hoping the bedroom will feel a lot cozier. With the wall painted, it was time to use a French cleat to hang that beautiful big leaf maple slab that a lot of you had seen behind the bed. I've been using it as a headboard and embarrassingly, it had just been sitting on the floor behind the bed. So it was time to hang it up. And I also added some LEDs behind the slab to backlight it to really make it pop from the wall. 
Next, I headed down to the workshop to make a TV wall panel, and I'm not sure what the exact technical name for this is, but basically it's a panel that sets the TV off the wall, allows you to add a pop of color, allows you to add some cool LED lighting around it, and overall, I think this is gonna turn the TV into a focal point instead of having it be an eyesore on the wall. After priming the plywood panel, I painted it the same dark blue color as I used on the feature wall behind the bed to tie the TV panel into the rest of the space. I also decided to add a floating shelf at the bottom of the TV panel. For this, I'm just using a piece of maple lumber that I ripped down on the table saw. I then used my router to add a chamfer on the underside and a round over on top. And pro tip here for any of you DIYers, aspiring woodworkers, if you wanna take any project up to the next level, just use a router, add a round over, add a chamfer. It really does make things look a lot more refined and it's super easy to do. To finish the floating shelf, I used Total Boat's Wood Honey. This is my favorite finish for when I need to get something done quick. I then used wood glue and screws to attach the floating shelf to the panel. I also added a French cleat, gave the back of the panel one coat of paint, and added some plywood pieces that would give me a place to attach LEDs behind the panel. And with that, Cam and I took the TV panel up to the bedroom to hang it on the wall. And with it hung, I did a bit of styling off camera, added a rug, decor, etc., to get the bedroom ready to show you guys right now. This is a bedroom that I like to hang out in. Oh, and so does Mr. Tex. Oh, he's a sleepy doggy. He likes his space. There was a challenge here because while the room felt plain, I spent a ton of money and time building these showstopper doors, and I wanted the design to complement those without fighting them. I also had really cool barn doors leading to the his and hers walk-in closets, and all that needed to work together. We got a simple slab on the wall, big leaf maple that we've got in the doors. Then we've just got a very simple platform bed, so you don't have anything fighting against all the cool live edge wood. We've also got a maple and black dresser, and then we painted the wall blue, and it is amazing what a difference paint can make. We built the TV backdrop with floating shelf and painted that the same color as the accent wall behind the bed to kind of tie it all together. We also used maple wood there, so there's a theme with the maple wood throughout, the maple flooring. I think it all comes together, ties into a space that that all of a sudden I like really look forward to lounging in this. And Tex, what do you think? He's, he certainly approves. Before we reveal the ensuite master bath, we got a flashback to 2020 and see the state this space was in when I bought the building. The small ensuite bathroom attached to the space was a total wreck. The stuff in the toilet had been left to marinate for years until I found it. There was also another bathroom, which is everyone's favorite from the initial building tour video with the dual facing toilets. And you actually walked up some stairs from the living room into the dual facing toilet bathroom. So we gutted everything, knocked down the wall between the ensuite bathroom and the bizarre dual facing toilet bathroom. I combined the space of both those bathrooms to make my dream master ensuite bathroom. We have the live edge doors opening up to the live edge mirror right here. Clean, simple, modern. We got a curbless shower that's huge. I think it's five feet by six foot roughly with the super clear low iron starfire glass. We got another piece of wall decor that I threw together over there to spice it up. And then over here, we got this really cool wood slat wall with the built-in LED lighting to really just give it a cool modern twist. And then over here, we got the live edge mirror that I made myself with a slab from my buddy Bart Comer's yard. We, we got a custom concrete vanity that I fabricated. I built all the cabinets. We have the, the linen closet with the really cool doors that slide away so you get full access there. And I also got to talk about one of the things that was most commented on when I put out the video for the bathroom, and that was the placement of the sink. So while you can turn it on and it doesn't splash, I do think people made a fair point that the faucets were a little bit close to the edge of the sink. Now, I had to pick the locations for the faucets 18 months before I actually even started fabricating the sink. I didn't even know what the sink was going to look like. So it was kind of a guessing game. It's something I could live with. It's not a huge pain in the butt, but it is something that if I were designing again, I'd shift them over a little towards the middle. So thank you audience for pointing out my stakes. I always appreciate that. And on that note though, this bathroom has been functional for almost two years now. And on a day-to-day -day basis, it makes me happy when I use this bathroom. And I think that's what counts. Is it okay if we go show everyone the roof? It's his yard up there, so. Okay, okay, all right, cool. He says it's okay, so. Let's go check out the last spot, one of the coolest spaces here, the rooftop deck and yard.
All right, so this rooftop has seen dramatic, dramatic improvement since when I bought the building. For those of you that have been following, you'll remember that the roof was a total disaster. There was holes everywhere. It was leaking. We had to rip the entire roof out. It cost me $55,000 to repair all the framing in the roof, get new everything laid down for almost 3,000 square feet of the flat roof here. About a year after I bought the building, Johnny Builds and I came up here and made a small rooftop deck so that I could have a little outdoor space while I was living here and the rest of the building was under renovation. Then in 2023, I got text and that changed everything, bumped up the urgency of getting a real cool rooftop area. Basically, I wanted to create an actual yard on my rooftop so I could just let the dog out. That meant we had to fence in this entire front area of the roof, which is about a thousand square feet. And the key feature here, which actually was pretty tricky to pull off, was having the grass be at the same level as the deck itself. And that really gives you the feeling that you're in a yard moving from the grass to the deck seamlessly. Then of course, the last part was adding Texas penthouse, this cool dog house and dog pool up here. A lot of you've been asking, has he been using it? Well, it's been pretty cold here in Chicago, so he really hasn't got much use of it. Today, it's probably the first nice day this spring that we're up here with the sun out. So the pool will be open for business soon. You guys will have to follow along. I'll make sure to get some shots of him playing in the pool once the weather is nice and warm on a consistent basis. So for those of you who are just finding this channel, I would argue that this is the most documented renovation on all of YouTube. There's over 50 videos showing the whole process start to finish. And for those of you who wanna just see the whole renovation, don't wanna watch 50 videos, we're gonna be releasing a start to finish renovation video. Heck, you could even call it the abandoned building movie. It's probably gonna be two or three hours long, condensing all 50 videos into one single video. Make sure you're subbing bell so you can get notified about that. And as for the future of the channel, now that the renovation is done, I'm of course doing some of those crazy furniture design and build videos, but also have another big renovation announcement, something in the works. We'll be explaining all that in its own video in about a month. So there is plenty to be excited for in the future for this channel. I have to thank all you guys for coming with me on this journey, renovating the abandoned building. And it really wouldn't have been possible without all of you watching the video, supporting me, supporting the sponsors who are making these possible. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I love all you guys. That's it for this time. And I'll see you guys next time.